welcome to en samosa and my mess podcast where we bring you exciting conversations with the thought leaders from various fields i am ks madhavrao professor of statistics in the department of statistics en samosa let us welcome our today's guest dr girisha ras who is a statistical leader with extensive experience in pharmaceutical industries and fda currently he stays in new york city usa and engages in statistical consultancy who is being interviewed by rishi jain and vidhi varadia hello and welcome to the very first of its kind podcast where we the students of ICS conference organized by N Somasa and MIMS have cumulatively gathered here to seek and store overflowing wisdom of our eminent and world renowned speakers my name is rishi jain i am vidhi moradia are the hosts of this podcast episode today we have with us honorable dr girish aras Dr Girish Aras holds a PhD degree in statistics and is a statistical leader offering 7 years of teaching experience at major American and Indian universities and more than 25 years of pharmaceutical and FDA experience. He has 17 years of managerial experience at the FDA and industry. His industry experience includes supporting global projects, supervising a team of 15 to 20 masters and PhD statisticians in local and remote and leading larger teams of statisticians and programmers. Regularly filing experience includes two BLAs including US and international submissions. FDA experience includes participation in advisory meetings as well as work experience as a reviewer and as a team leader therapeutic experience includes inflammation cardiology pulmonary diabetes antiviral and gi the main strengths are supporting phase 3 programs submissions medical affairs with innovative studies and methodologies harvesting real world evidence to augment clinical trials based evidence I'll start with the questions. So first of a very basic question, what inspired you to pursue your degree in statistics? Uh, yeah, I uh, in high school itself I was very much interested in mathematics and sciences. Um, you know, in those days basically the basic mathematics, algebra and geometry and uh, on the physics side the standard physics chemistry. So those are the ones that uh, interested me much more than uh languages and uh, social sciences uh, so by uh, in those days it was just up to 11th grade and then you went for four years of college uh, uh, unlike this 10 plus 2 system that most of you are familiar with um so um immediately after my uh, ssc i uh, uh, in a four year college i wanted to do uh, mathematics um, and uh, somehow um i just drifted uh, into statistics uh, for 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 various reasons people say oh there is more jobs in statistics uh, you know um, many of you probably experience that uh, elders tell you uh, something that really later on you figure out it doesn't really make sense but uh, you know well, uh, in in my time people said oh uh, mathematics you what will you do you, you know you just graduate and become a teacher whereas if you do statistics there is a lot of scope the scope was the keyword i would say you know and people said okay you can earn your living doing statistics and uh, so then i did statistics I, i particularly didn't like in those days the uh, um the computational aspect of statistics i was more interested in the mathematical side of it and that interest was uh, continued uh, so um I, i don't know whether i answered your question or yeah, to say yeah sir so as we know that you have been graduated from the university of michigan so could you describe that experience yeah i graduated from michigan state university yeah, michigan. Uh, yeah there are there are two uh, major universities in michigan university of michigan is in ann arbor and michigan state university is in uh, east lansing they are about uh, uh 70 miles uh, apart the two cities um so uh michigan state university uh, has had a long past 
uh, uh, with uh, Indian uh, Indians going there. Uh, many of my 15, 20 years seniors were also Michigan State uh, graduates. For, for example, uh, our main speaker yesterday, uh, Dr. Rao, is also a Michigan State uh, PhD. Uh, so, um, so they had a thriving uh, statistics program, probability and statistics. What attracted me was, as I told you, to link to my previous answer, uh, I had bias towards theoretical mathematical statistics. And that's what MSU was famous for. They had a, even their department was called probability and statistics. I was more interested in the probability side and the uh, uh, mathematical statistics. So that was a good fit. Um, uh, they had a very uh, strong program, uh, again, uh, mostly in theory. And later on, I wish uh, they had more applied uh, courses uh, that they, they could have made compulsory. Because on my own, I would not have chosen to be in those courses. But uh, uh, later on, as all of you know, I slowly drifted to more and more uh, applied uh, statistics. So. Had I had some formal training in applied uh, uh, thinking, that would have helped me uh, more. Uh, my PhD there was uh, rather quick. I finished in three years and then uh, then moved on from there to an academic career. So what are some common misconceptions about statistics that you have encountered? Well, well I'll speak for myself. Uh, one of my fundamental uh, mistake, uh, I would definitely call it a mistake, to think statistics is like any pure uh, science. You know, you study statistics for its own sake, uh, and that's, that's far from truth. Uh, the statistics is basically the problems of interest uh, have to come from uh, applications, from real-world applications of, uh, of, the, of the techniques. So. Uh, Statisticians should always um, um, uh, uh, look for inspiration. Even the theoretical research uh, statistics should be uh, rooted in uh, some kind of uh, important applied problem. Unlike in mathematics, you can uh, pursue research uh, just for the aesthetics of the subject, just the, uh, uh, the, the purity of subject and without uh, particular uh, emphasis on the application with a, with a belief that the applications would uh, uh, would get sorted out. They will uh, make use of the, the pure uh, mathematics. Uh, but that's not the case with, with statistics. Statistics has to, uh, if you keep it very abstract, it, uh, it uh, stays abstract. It doesn't uh, blossom into a, a new discipline. Uh, uh, for example, you know something like survival analysis. It it, it becomes a such a popular subject within um, uh, statistics simply because of its application in healthcare and uh, uh, where, where uh, certain uh, random variables uh, are not instantaneously avail available. Uh, for example, uh, the, uh, certain variables are available. Uh, in few seconds, such as your height or weight, you know, it can be measured. But uh, so suppose you have cold or you have uh, some disease uh, uh, and you want to see how quickly you get better, you have to wait in real time to see whether it takes five days or 10 days, right? So, uh, uh, so then that's how the, the survival analysis as a subject uh, came into existence. So uh, most of the, uh, the popular uh, areas of statistics and their uh, are obviously application oriented and they have applications uh, in all branches of science as well as social science and uh, you can seek inspiration from sociology psychology political science economics uh, right up to uh, high level quantum mechanics or physics uh, you know everywhere uh, statistics is uh, is needed uh, Many of these folks are smart enough to learn it on their own and, you know, apply it. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, if you have a department of statistics uh, anywhere in the industry or uh, government or or academia, uh, 
I would say that it, it, uh, your life as a statistician is almost futile if you are not partnering with uh, some other major discipline and, uh, uh, so to speak, uh, you know, get, get a chance to play in their backyard. You know, whatever they are doing, you know, slowly you uh, gain expertise uh, in uh, subject matter of interest and uh, sort of uh, educate them and get educated about their field and becomes a truly organic uh, uh, partnership uh, to, to kind of uh, take human knowledge forward. So, sir, could you share some of the most interesting and impactful projects you've worked on? Uh, yeah, I mean, se several uh, of things that I did uh, would uh, qualify uh, as, uh, as as fun, uh, very interesting projects and useful project because I was fortunate to be in the health field, um, uh, and that too in uh, uh, in drug regulation, drug development, uh, and drug development is one of the most it's one of the most complex human endeavor. Uh, what human beings uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, dabble into that most people are not aware of this, but uh, to uh, to develop a, a drug, uh, uh, you know, an impactful drug for uh, for uh, any kind of uh, chronic diseases or even acute diseases that we see uh, is a um, uh, is a formidable task in the sense that uh, it requires expertise from uh, uh, basic chemistry, microbiology. Uh, molecular biology, uh, applied chemistry, uh, biochemistry, uh, uh, if you are into devices, uh, physics, uh, if you are into devices, uh, uh, in a, in many fields of engineering would also be contributing. Uh, and uh, above all, uh, of course, the medicine, you know, the doctors. Uh, so for any pharmaceutical company, for example, uh, we'll have hundreds of uh, MDs. Uh, they'll have uh, hundreds of PhDs. Uh, actually, hundred is a small number. You know, four, five. You know, large companies will have thousand uh, MDs uh, working for them. Uh, several chemists working for them. Chemistry PhDs. Uh, then, in the production side, you need chemical engineers. Uh, you need biomedical engineers, and so on and so forth. Uh, so this sort of tells you why drugs, uh, developing drugs are is such an expensive, uh, 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 from a business perspective also, uh, you know, many times, it, uh, after all, I just take a pill, which is a powder, uh, why should uh, it cost me so much, you know, but because this lot of know-how has gone into it. Um, also, all these uh, experiments are in real time. So, suppose you are uh, trying to uh, find a drug for, uh, 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 for say, a heart attack or you know cardiovascular uh, endpoints such as uh, heart failure or myocardiac infarction, which is heart attacks and uh, uh, and stroke, you know, and things like that. Um, these are endpoints that are available over a long period of time. You, know, you, you can choose a patient who has a propensity uh, for uh, uh, because of, say, high cholesterol levels or you know some biomarkers that tell you uh, obesity, diabetes. It might tell you that yeah, this person is a candidate for uh, for a uh, clinical event such as uh, you know. Uh, the kind I mentioned, you know, uh, Mario, uh, uh, MIs um, uh, and uh, uh, heart failures and so on and so forth. Uh, but then you have to really wait in time, right? Uh, 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 someone may, may may not get an attack at all for s six years, though he's highly high propensity to get one, uh, whereas some people may get it. But it's not some uh, data won't be available to you within a few days, but it'll, it could take several years. So, uh, 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 so again, uh, to follow a certain group of people uh, long term, uh, some of the trials are global. There'll be uh, subjects uh, from uh, participating from uh, Western Europe, from 
China, from India, and some of these trials are, uh, you know, a few thousand subjects uh, all over the world. Uh, so, uh, need infrastructure, or if you don't have it, you, you borrow infrastructure from a contract research organizations and so on, or uh, certain, certain companies um, that offer supply chain management, etc., for uh, uh, for cl clinical trials, maybe India centric. So there might be Indian companies that uh, help you run a trial because, after all, a company in uh, Switzerland or in uh, uh, UK uh, may not have the uh, the operational aspects of conducting a trial in. Uh, in say China or in India, so uh, so it's a very complex uh, 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 conduct. Not only the research, but also uh, the operational aspect to, to conduct uh, uh, trials in such a way that uh, uh, they are interpretable later. The, the, the errors are less because any errors you make, so subjects uh, drop out is a loss of uh, you know so a data, right? You wanted to uh, follow somebody for uh, five years and someone simply uh, vanishes from the from the scene, uh, uh, drops out of the trial, or withdraws uh, consent form and says I don't want to participate and so on is a loss to the to uh, the human cause as well as to the to, 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 to uh, the company that invests uh, uh, significant amount of uh, resources and, and, and money. So uh, it, it is a uh, uh, very, very complex activity in terms of execution, in terms of theory, research, uh, all aspects of uh, drug development is very fascinating. Uh, so uh, uh, I was fortunate to to participate in uh, cardiovascular trial, uh, also a lot of autoimmune diseases such as uh, 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 rheumatoid arthritis, uh, psoriasis. Uh, so many of the drugs I worked on, mainly in these two categories. Uh, we can discuss some specifics uh, later. Yeah. Okay. So when working with large data sets in the pharmaceutical industry, what are the biggest challenges you face? Uh, the, the large data uh, uh, in, the big, in the context of big data, uh, uh, large data uh, uh, is, is a relative term, you know, small data was it. But big data now has a, has a uh, specific meaning, right? Where uh, uh, these are... Uh, uh, extremely large uh, uh, data sets and uh, in the pharmaceutical side there are uh, both kinds uh, of uh, large data uh, by uh, the two kinds that I specifically want to uh, to, to touch upon is uh, our um, um, uh, data as is for example uh, uh, claims data by claims data, uh, I mean um, after the drug is marketed, people uh, consume that drug. Whoever you know needs it takes it. So that's a very large uh, uh, population compared to clinical trials, which are you know a few thousand. This uh, on the uh, on the claim side, it will be millions of people who take uh, take the drug because it's marketed uh, worldwide. Uh, uh, you're uh, you're following their adverse events following their, uh, um, so these are mainly their insurance, uh, through their insurance agencies, etc. you get to uh, have access to this data. So that's a very large data, but it is the data that is out there, you basically get, uh, 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 get access to it, right? Uh, whereas uh, in the, the development side, you need to create your own data and you have to plan what would be the right uh, uh, format in which you collect the data. So uh, data standardization also becomes a uh, very important uh, uh, tool so that uh, all the companies follow same uh, uh, sort of uh, categories in terms of uh, whatever they're collecting, 
uh, even simple things like uh, age, sex, in what format would you collect? Should age be collected as a continuous number or should be collected as a, uh, 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 you know, as integers, positive integers, uh, 50 years uh, is 50 years would mean 50 to 51, you know, anybody in that. Uh, so all companies should follow uh, the, the programming structure should be similar so that uh, data could be merged across uh, uh, different indications, different companies, different uh, 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 countries, uh, different time periods and so on and so forth, uh, as well as uh, once the data, uh, the, the drugs are uh, uh, marketed, uh, they are required many times to uh, indulge into more complex and long-term uh, studies uh, or trials. So, uh, so the, as the population of subjects who are exposed uh, to to trials that increases, uh, you want the data to be more and more uh, uh, friendly for unification. So, data standardization itself is a, uh, a key uh, aspect of uh, big data so that you know what you are collecting, uh, what it means. Uh, so if somebody says, I have a severe headache or uh, uh, severe pain, uh, you should be able to, at least to the extent possible, uh, uh, try and uh, uh, create categories that are comparable across populations, across people. Uh, so that's one aspect of um, uh, data that we as humans uh, uh, by design generate so that it benefits us. Uh, 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 in fact, um, clinical trials are, are probably the only exper experiment that we sort of conduct in real time. Uh, sort of we are trying to play, play God here by uh, randomizing uh, uh, groups uh, into two or more groups and follow them longitudinally over over a period of time uh, so that uh, we can causally uh, uh, make decisions about uh, uh, whether an intervention such as uh, giving a particular drug on top of uh, standard of care uh, really uh, has efficacy or not, whether it works or not. Uh, so, um, so, so, so the big data uh, 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 in modern times now it comes to you through two sources. It is simply there, out there, because of we have a larger computers, larger uh, data collection at all levels because it is cheaper, and it's there for us to uh, to uh, analyze uh, whether you like it or not. It's there. So uh, whatever uh, techniques we have to summarize uh, or get information nuggets out of that big data uh, is a um, uh, is a uh, uh, need of the time as well as the other side that i mentioned you should design uh, things in such a way that you generate a, 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 a data that would solve some important human uh, human problems uh, and uh, uh, so those data also uh, become large sometimes by design because you uh, you choose to build them in such a way that they can be integrated across, uh, you know, smoothly across uh, different population, different uh, times, different countries and, and, and so on. So according to you, how is the use of statistics different in the pharmaceutical industry than the other industries? Uh, the statistical uh, uh, techniques are, of course, uh, of course, uh, very similar. Uh, uh, that's why we all study statistics, get uh, masters and PhD, so that uh, certain uh, paradigms of statistics are uh, useful uh, in all subjects, all scientific uh, subjects. So, in that sense, these the statistical aspects are uh, of the from a technical perspective, it's uh, it's the same. Uh, as um, uh, any other uh, application of statistics. Uh, but every uh, field has its own 
tools that are more popular in uh, certain areas and uh, certain uh, other statistical tools are uh, applicable in some other areas um, even within uh, pharmaceutical or healthcare related uh, uh, areas uh, you know some only some uh, um, drugs are given chronically you know uh, such as uh, say for uh, cancer or for cardiovascular issues and then some are like uh, 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 like penicillin or you know anti infective you take them acutely you have uh, infections you take it for few days and uh, you are you are cured you know so that time you don't have sensor data you have mostly uh, you know your random variable is fully uh, uh, available to you at the uh, the trials are short uh, and, and and so on so there the techniques could could uh, differ uh, a little bit uh, in terms of uh, uh, within within statistics uh, but uh, it's not the statistics uh, that makes uh, applications uh, different it's the application themselves so um, uh, so health science is of course you when you are participating as a statistician uh, you need to understand uh, the underlying disease to some extent you know you have to understand your uh, other colleagues uh, sometimes uh, uh, you know as a, as a statistician when you are studying statistics everybody around you is a statistician uh, and you very easily uh, talk about uh, uh, null hypothesis and, uh, and uh, uh, Neyman's uh, theorem and uh, what have you, CR Rav inequality and so on. But when you go in the applied side, uh, uh, in a, a room full of uh, 20 people, uh, you are the only statistician. Uh, the other 19 are not statisticians and uh, you you cannot be throwing jargon at them you should be talking uh, in their language uh, you have to kind of uh, uh, understand uh, where they are coming from you know they are not there to explain to you what uh, i mean they are to some extent they need to uh, to as a part of the team they should be able to uh, express their needs but they will be expressing their needs in their technical uh, terms uh, and uh, you have to make f an effort to really understand uh, what uh, in order to be useful uh, you need to really understand what uh, what are they looking for in terms of uh, uh, quantitative uh, uh, assistance from your side you know and uh, even simple things like a mean or standard deviation you will find it very hard to to explain to uh, to a very uh, educated audience uh, who have uh, had uh, no statistics as a, as a, as a, as a background you know. So, could you please discuss your experience in supervising PhD students and their research in various uh, projects? Uh, the, the PhD uh, students, of course, again, come in uh, all uh, uh, sizes and shapes. Uh, some people are uh, talented in, uh, uh, in, in, in mathematics, some are uh, more uh, application oriented and uh, uh, their communication skills are better uh, in the sense that they, if they are working on some applied problem, uh, they have to do some field work, they have to interact with uh, other disciplines. Some are good at that. Uh, some want to sit at, uh, in, at their desk and prove uh, uh, is hopefully you know, a deep mathematical uh, insight or truth into their PhD uh, thesis. Um, to train a student uh, uh, is, a, uh, is a very noble uh, uh, activity that one can perform, especially at the uh, at the higher end. Uh, they, uh, so, uh, a PhD student, after a couple of years of uh, coursework and so on, uh, soon uh, organically becomes uh, like you, becomes a member of the the faculty, uh, more or less. Um, um, uh, some of the universities in uh, in US had always. Uh, um, this tradition that after comprehensive, take away comprehensive exam, 
after a couple of years of coursework and they uh, let uh, um, so that's a dividing point they uh, let some people go and say ha ah, you're not suited for phd at least here uh, and uh, here is your master's degree and uh, bye bye and and those who graduate uh, they are more or less uh, uh, not assured in any way but uh, it's uh, with a high probability they are going to finish phd and so on so after they finish their uh, com- comprehensive exam slowly you will see a transition that these people are calling their advisors by name uh, all their their teachers so the idea is that you soon going to become part of that group and join that uh, group uh, of uh, 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 researchers and uh, so that's one privilege people uh, get as a membership uh, to to this uh, uh, this group of scientists so to speak you know so um so the the, the training uh, is uh, at various level uh, uh, being a supervisor or being a part of the uh, academic uh, advisory group uh you are supposed to really because it's a interaction with very small group of people it's not you're talking about four or five uh students at a phd level at any department at any you know in a reasonable department some very large departments have several students but uh typical department uh, have uh, uh, uh at a late stage uh, phd uh, you know you can really count them on your fingers so uh so it's a very intense uh, partnership relationship uh, and uh, you really get to uh, know their weaknesses and strengths and i'm sure uh, uh, vice versa is true too they understand the limitations of their advisors uh, uh, and that's why it's good to have a team of uh, uh, advisors maybe the phd formal advisor somebody who signs on the document uh, is one person but uh, the most successful programs such as in indian statistical institute and so on uh, i remember uh, you know uh, uh, unlike in some foreign uh, countries uh, it was more a community uh, uh, education you, you if you uh, have a uh, question to discuss uh, in, the, in your thesis you don't have to go to to your formal advisor you could uh, in the corridor you meet uh, jk ghosh or cr rao you could uh, talk to them and uh, they might get interested in what you have to say uh, it's your job to get them interested though they they have uh, uh, you know a uh, uh, lot of demand on their time and so on uh, so uh, uh, so again it's a it's a it's a partnership that uh, not just in uh, statistics or in phd side but any uh, very deep deep sort of skill say surgeon or medicine you know this uh, this kind of partnership uh, is very valuable uh, which is more or less one on one and it's not just uh, true true of academics right our music tradition is also like that if you want to become a, a really great uh, uh, you know concert singer or a sitar player ultimately it becomes a very intense uh, uh, personal friendship and uh, relationship with uh, with your uh, with your trainer advisor master so to speak so sir have you had the opportunity to review the programs offered by the neel kamal school of mathematics applied statistics and analytics If so what are your reflections on the sustainability in terms of international benchmarking imparting graduate abilities industry preparedness and placement yeah well this is a this is a very uh, 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 loaded question uh, uh, i mean it has so many aspects uh, uh, my uh, 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 partnership with uh, with uh, with the faculty here etc is just uh, past few months uh, uh i have been to your uh, website and also looked at your uh, program on 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 paper it is of course uh, very very impressive and uh, it has it offers you uh, many modern uh, topics and, uh, uh, 
and uh, opportunities. Uh, I, I have uh, no reason to, to doubt that uh, the, uh, the ground realities are also very similar, uh, but uh, I, ha I don't have any direct uh, experience. Uh, 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 it's, it's very nice. Last two days I'm meeting students and the junior faculty and uh, others, but uh, uh, I visited, as I said, your website and uh, spoken with some of your senior mentors here and these are of course very fine uh, uh, statisticians and uh, uh, and with a with lot of experience uh, the program definitely is very ambitious it has uh, it covers a, a large spectrum of uh, modern activities uh, such as you know uh, again big data uh, uh, machine learning uh, artificial intelligence um, some popular uh, areas in uh, in computer science, their overlap with statistics, uh, health statistics. Uh, I, I'm sure, uh, you know, engineering side, uh, reliability, et cetera. Also, I see, I see those as, as courses uh, offered here. Um, so um, uh, largely any such program, uh, again, uh, uh, what you put in print uh, on a, a document uh, has to to come alive with uh, with the faculty and the students uh, and their partnership, and uh, I'm I'm sure that's what is happening here. And uh, it's a reputable institu institution and has a has a uh, history. And uh, so I really wish uh, all of you well. Thank you, sir. So, do you have any knowledge of the core faculty in the Department of Statistics at NSOMA, sir? Their research interests and publications. Yeah, again, as I say, uh, you know, it's the uh, same reflection on what I uh, did uh, uh, the previous question. Uh, I've, I've been chatting with them last few days and uh, and also in terms of managing the invitation and uh, logistics of the this current uh, uh, conference, uh, I've been talking to them. Uh, many of them are, are students of my contemporaries and people I know really, really well uh, who were uh, uh, sort of uh, some my seniors, some my juniors, some sort of, uh, you know, plus minus two, three year framework. So uh, I, I hold their teachers in very high regard. Uh, so the, uh, I, I presume uh, uh, the, the faculty that you have had, uh, had the best of training and uh, they, they, uh, uh, and also have uh, uh, quickly reviewed their uh, their uh, past appointments uh, prior to uh, uh, this institution uh, and uh, many of them are um, have have had very varied experience uh, in, in, in internally as well as in, in, in foreign countries and so on. So uh, uh, definitely it, 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 it looks like a, a very a competent bunch. Uh, and I'm sure it is uh, what I see last two days here. They, you know, they are uh, uh, very committed and very, uh, very excited about the, uh, about the future of this place and the, the, and the research community, the student community, and, and so on. Uh, again, research is not the only uh, part of uh, uh, an academic uh, partnership. Uh, it's uh, research, uh, teaching, uh, applications, and uh, uh, and also administration to kind of uh, certain senior people, I'm sure, are, are spend a lot of time uh, creating, uh, uh, working through administration to create more opportunities so that better statisticians can uh, join the group and, uh, you know, uh, uh, more opportunities can be created uh, for uh, larger spectrum of courses and expertise. And so uh, uh, all, all these three things are, uh, I mean, administration, research, and teaching uh, are uh, part of the re main risk core responsibilities of, of any successful uh, faculty. 
So, Anna, thank you so much sir, for your valuable time and patience. With this, we come to an end to the past, uh, podcast session. Thank you for tolerating. My pleasure. Thank you.